name is Matt Carter. Welcome to episode number 45 of the show right here on Shaw TV. Musicians in behind us here, we have Brett, Kaylee, and Austin, who form the Distributors. And in fact, if they're wearing hats, you could probably call them the Distributor Caps. Anyways, they're based out of Woodland Secondary School uh, from right here in Nanaimo, and they're currently in top 10 for voting for You Think Magazine's BC's Best Teen Band Contest. Andrew Roberts, who's currently in the top 10 in 17 Magazine's Best Heartthrob Contest, he'll be having an interview with them later on this hour. Also on the show, I'd like to welcome veteran journalist and former Nanaimo City Councillor Merv Unger to the set as a new host. He'll be uh, speaking with Sergeant Cheryl Armstrong about Nanaimo policing. And did you know that Nanaimo is home to what might be the longest active musical ensemble in all of Canada? Well, I'm not talking about the guy with the long hair who plays CCR tunes on the four-string guitar down in front of the library, but instead I'm talking about the Nanaimo Concert Band, more than 100 years old. And uh, Joan Heron has brought in author Amy Campbell to trumpet the history of that group. Now, February is not just a month for Valentine's, and actually reminds me, I have about 30 cards I have to get into the mail, but it's also a month where you have to uh, learn about your heart. So Heart and Stroke, they're uh, doing some great stuff, some wonderful fundraisers here. Bob Fenty will get to the heart of their annual information and fundraising campaign. And Bob is actually doing double duty by finding out about a series of events here in Nanaimo for Black History Month. And those are put on by the Nanaimo African Heritage Society. We've also got Anna Bosa on board, who'll be doing... Uh, Whoops, I'll also be doing two uh, segments as well, some financial uh, planning ticks, and also telling us about National Cupcake Day. Pretty stoked on that. I'm hoping for National Leftovers Hour to take place after that. But first up, we're gonna bring you to the House of Paint, as Lorraine Jensen will be looking into home improvements in regards to paint selection. So I do hope your popcorn's warm, because we're ready to go. Right here is the show on Shaw TV. Dodds Furniture's The Show is brought to you by Dodds Furniture and Mattress. Now open in Nanaimo. Hi, my name is Lorraine Jensen, and today on the show, I'm talking about change. Spring is coming, and with spring comes change. And um, one of the things that I love to change is the colors. The colors of my clothes, colors of my cars, colors of my house. And Alison is my guest this evening, and Alison is from Sunshine Girls Painting. Welcome, Alison. Thanks, Lorraine. Now, Alison is a color consultant as well as a professional painter. I am. And Alison is going to give us some tips tonight about what to do with paint. Now, Alison, I'm a pretty good painter. You know, I can, I can roll the thing there. The thing? The thing, the roller. That's right. So why would I hire you to come and paint my house? Well, you might not need to. Maybe you love it, and I think if people love it, they really should do it themselves because it's kind of rewarding when you like doing it. But, you know, not everybody can cut their own hair and maybe go to hairdressers, so you might want to hire a professional to do it. You know, it always seems like a great idea for me at the time. Oh, yeah, I'm going to paint. I go and I buy all my stuff and pick the perfect color. Right. And, you know, it gets boring after a while. It's the corners and all of those things. And... You know, I understand what I like to do most is pick the color. Right. But That's I understand that part. you are a color consultant, which means that you would help me choose a color. <laughs> Absolutely. And help being the operative word. I don't come into your house and pick the color for you. I really believe that color is a personal thing, and it's something that you should pick for yourself based on how you feel and how you relate to the colors around you. So you basically, um, well, okay, let's just use this for an example. Absolutely. I have this picture that my dad painted. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and so I want to put this on a wall, but I want to really, um, I, I want to, what do I want to do with it? <laughs> I want it to stand out. Fair enough. So I came to you and I said, what color do you think would, would work with this? Right. Okay. Well, starting with an actual piece that appeals to you is definitely a great place to start. Um, what you do when you look at this, think about how you want to feel when you're looking at it, where it's going to go, what part of it do you really relate to and feel good about and want to see more of. So, do you want me to show you a couple of sure. samples? So we looked at a couple of these beforehand and um, one of the ones is green. Green is a really hot color right now, um, which is not to say you need to use it, but it, you're just going to see it in a lot of places. So you might want to put a green up here to really bring out the background. This is if you wanted a really bright and fresh kind of room. Might not be good in a living room, but in right. a bedroom perhaps that would work just fine. Um, maybe what you want to do is pull out some of the purples like in the matting and in her violet there. 
and there's different ones. I don't know how well these are going to show up on camera, but there are so many different types of colors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right, that you can, you can just keep going through them and picking the ones that you like. And then it's about eliminating the colors and not selecting the colors. So holding up the colors that you like against a white background, and you can um, eliminate the ones you don't like, and what you're left is the one that you should have. I see. Mm -hmm. So it's a process of elimination as Absolutely. opposed to always about elimination. Start with all of the colors that you think you might like and then reduce the ones by getting rid of the ones you don't like and the one you're left with is probably the one you should have. You know what I end up doing? I mm. pick by the name. Oh, yeah, lots but of why people do, they do have that. Names on them? <laughs> so that you pick by the name. Um, it, it, because it, people relate to it better. It used to be some of the paint stores would have just numbers, but it was never really great to go in there and say, oh, hey, I put color 7912 on my wall. People right. aren't going to remember that, but they will remember like Meadowlark. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Well, why don't you and I take these color samples Absolutely. and go off down to the paint shop. Where are we going to go? We're going to go to Dulux. Okay, we'll go to Dulux and mm -hmm. pick some paints and come back and see what we can come up Sounds with. Sounds great to me. Okay. Okay, so off we go. We're going to go down to the paint store. We're yep. going to get some colors. We're going to come back and we're going to paint some samples and see what they look like in the background. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, we'll do that. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. we are going to pass things over to Anna, who is going to be talking to Dean Corto about some financial tips. Over to you, Anna. Thank you, Lorraine. Welcome, Dean. Today I have Dean Carto, who is a financial advisor from Sunlight Financial with us. Welcome. Thank you, Anna. Thanks <laughs> for having me. Appreciate it. Now, I guess my first question to ask you is, what is a financial advisor? Well, that's a very good question. Um, financial advisor, I guess, ultimately is somebody who can help you, uh, no matter what stage of your life you're in, help you set some financial planning goals. Um, somebody who can work with you and work with your family, a trusted advisor who can uh, really help you set some short, long-term goals and help you create that financial plan and, and ultimately get you to retirement. To your portfolio. To your portfolio, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Is there a cost involved in having a financial planner? Uh, with Sun Life, there's no cost involved directly to the client to uh, have us do the plan. Um, our clients, often clients think that there's a cost and I think that's a, a hesitant for people to come and see us, but no, there's no cost for clients to come in and see us. We can uh, help people with budgeting, uh, life insurance, different uh, types of RSP planning, retirement planning. And there's no direct cost to the client. We, we're paid by our company to uh, uh, when we place business with the company. So there's no direct cost to the client. Well, that's good to know, yeah, actually. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, there's a lot of hype about TFSAs, which are tax-free savings accounts. Yeah. What are they? There is a lot of hype about the tax-free <laughs> savings been, account. Yeah, absolutely, right now. and uh, and for good reason. Uh, the tax-free savings account, Anna, probably is one of the uh, best financial vehicles we've had introduced into the market uh, since the RRSP uh, right. back in 1956, I think. So, thanks to Harper and his government in 2009, they've uh, introduced the tax-free savings account. Tax-free savings account is. Uh, an excellent vehicle that allows you to contribute uh, $5,000 a year. Uh, and then actually this year in 2013, they've increased that to 5,500. Which is awesome. Which is good. Yeah. So ultimately somebody right now, if they've never opened a tax-free savings account, they could have $25,500 in the tax-free savings account growing with no tax on any of that Meaning income they're earning. Meaning accrued since 2009? Is 2009, that so that money, for that cat, that contribution room follows you forward. Okay. So if you well, didn't have you've time. never contributed to your to your TFSA, you haven't lost that contribution. So room. you keep it with you. That's then. right. Okay. That's right. And how does a tax free savings account work? Tax free savings account works in uh, the principle that any money you put in to the tax free savings account into that contribution of five thousand a year grows tax free inside of the plan. So any interest that you earn inside of the plan grows tax free until right. such time when you pull that money out of the plan, you actually are pulling that money out tax-free. So there's never any tax on any of the money that you've earned in the plan. Okay. Right? So a lot of people aren't aware of that. Okay. Yeah, yeah that is yeah. that is it's something new, isn't it? It is fairly new to people, and, and people maybe you know don't fully understand the plan yet. A um, little bit different than the RRSP account, yeah. uh, which we what can talk a little bit about. What is the difference then between... The difference between the RRSP and the tax-free savings account is uh, with the RRSP, if you put the $5,000 into the RSP, that deduction is actually taken off your income for that year. So with an RSP, 
you get a tax deduction for the money you put in. The money grows tax-free until you take it out right. at retirement. But at retirement, when you pull that money out, it is going to be taxed at your marginal tax rate in that year. Okay. With the tax-free savings account, the money that you put in grows tax-free. When you take it out, there's no tax. Right. So for different people in different situations, sometimes the RSP is a better bet and sometimes the tax-free tax savings, savings account, account is a better bet. And that's something we can help people with. Now, one thing that um, you mentioned was over contribution for a tax-free savings account. There are rules around are rules. over contribution, yeah. yes. And the same with the RRSP. Uh, as most people know, you can only contribute so much to your RRSP, and then there are penalties uh, if you over contribute. The same applies with the tax free savings account. Okay. So, if you, uh, one thing that's really important for people to realize if you put $5,000 or 5500 now in two thir 2013 into right. your tax free savings account, so for example, in 2013, January, you put in $5,500. June comes along, you pull some money out. Let's say right. you take 2,000 out, you put that $2,000 back in in September. Technically, you've over contributed for that year. You can't put that right. money back in until the following calendar year. Right. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dean. I You're really welcome. appreciate your Thank coming you. on Thank our you show tonight. That's Thank you. awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to go back to paint chips. Go, Lorraine. <laughs> Well, we are back from the store. We've been to the store. We've painted our sample boards, and now we have three different colors that we're going to display with this picture. So the first one you've got up here is the white. Absolutely. And why did you put the white one up there in the first place? Well, it gives you a clean palette to look at. So when you're holding up your samples, you're not being influenced by anything else around it. So it's always good to eliminate. If you had pink on this wall, this gives you clean, and it's not going to influence what you're, what you're putting up against it. OK, so what mm -hmm. did we come up with first? So here we went with one of the greens. Nice. And you see how it changes the, um, the green in the background. It really makes it brighter. The black stands out a little bit more. And um, now, this is not necessarily the great color for everybody. And it's really making sure you get the color that works best for you. So, so I could put this on a feature wall. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily the wall that the picture is on, but I could put it on another wall and it would still bring the color out. Is that right? You can. You do need to be careful about that, that you don't divide somebody's attention as well. If okay. this is what you want them to be looking at, you want to make sure that you're not forcing them to look somewhere else. Okay, got yeah. it. Okay, what other color you got here? Well, we picked um, one of the purples to bring out the matting around the uh, frame and to bring out the violet in her jacket there. And it just changes the picture. You can see the green recesses a little bit and the purple pops out a little bit more. It really does make a difference, doesn't it? It does. The color does. that you use. Yes. And then the last one we picked was one of the reds. And that was to bring out the lipstick and the eyeshadow on her. And this would be great if you were doing it in a dining room, maybe. It's nice. Yeah. And red always stimulates appetite, so it's not a bad place to put does it. Does it now? It does, yeah. So even my cooking? Even your cooking, Lorraine. And apparently this color is what, 2012? Oh, color that was of the, the color pick of the year. Color Unusual for a red, but yes, that's what. So for those people that's important to, it was the color of the year. So out of all of these <laughs> colors, what would you choose? Oh, well, I would choose what works best for the customer. It really, the customer is the one that's going to be seeing it every single day. I will see it while we're picking it, and then I go home. So it is so important that if the red is the one that works for you, then that is the right one here. And it's more of a feeling thing, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, colors really impact the way we feel, what we're comfortable with, how we breathe, how we sleep, how we feel. And it is just so important to make sure you're in touch with that. Sometimes you end up with a color you didn't even know you liked, but you liked the way it made you feel. Mm -hmm. It's funny, isn't it? It is. Yeah, wow. color is, it changes everything. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, Alison, this has been delightful. Thank we you. We spent time off camera. We did. At the paint store and, of course, just running back oh, and forth to the paint that's store. that's a lot of work. I know. Look at us. And it's, it's been great. And, mm -hmm. and I know that you are in business and people can find you at www.sunshinegirlspainting.com. Absolutely. They can find you at 250-729-5033. Mm -hmm. And um, not only are you a... a, a painter but and you, you you're a very smart savvy businesswoman well thanks and Marie. i've learned so much from you and i've really enjoyed the time that we've had together likewise thanks thank you so thanks again for being here thanks okay so on the next note i am going to pass it over to bob fenty who is interviewing uh my new friend sarah Maisie from the heart and stroke foundation over to you bob
Thank you very much, Lorraine. And yes, you're right. We are going to talk today uh, to Sarah Maisie from who's the Special Events Coordinator with the Nanaimo Heart and Stroke Foundation. Welcome, Sarah. Thank and you. you know, February really is the, the, the month that Valentine's come out. But more importantly, it's the month that we spend on heart and stroke. Tell us about what you're doing for heart and stroke this month, Sarah. Well, February is our National Heart Month, and it's awareness and fundraising campaign across Canada. You've got a lot of volunteers running around the Nanaimo, I think, too, don't you? We do. We have a, a canvassing campaign, and we have over 300 volunteers that will be canvassing your neighborhood this month, so keep so an eye out for them. Yeah. Yeah. So if I wanted to be a volunteer, what, what do I do? How do I get, become a volunteer? Well, you can call our office, and we'd be happy to, uh, to, to set you up either in your neighborhood or a, a neighborhood across Nanaimo. Wonderful. So just that simple? It's that simple, no, yes. Sure. And talking about simple, the penny that we... we Recently, it's big news right now, and uh, it's being phased out. And I know that you're doing something with pennies as well, too. Tell us what you're doing there. Well, actually, the Coastal Community Credit Unions across the island are collecting pennies for the Heart and Stroke Foundation. They always do a lot of fundraising for Heart Month, and this is their newest initiative, so we're so happy. So I can take my big jar of pennies <laughs> yeah. and take them in and dump them down? The bigger the jar, the better. Wonderful, <laughs> yeah. And also, too, I noticed there's a lot of local businesses. I was in a a large shopping center today, a grocery store, and there's these paper hearts all over the wall. Tell us about that. We What's have some on? really supportive businesses in Nanaimo and across the island. But You um, can tell us who they are. In Nanaimo, we have Country Grocer, Coastal Community Credit Union, Mid-Island Co-op, Royal Bank, and Walmart that are all selling paper hearts They're for the Heart and Stroke hearts? Foundation. For two bucks, are they? No? Yeah, $2, two, $2 a two piece. Dollars. So is there a contest between to see who can raise the most? Hearts? Well, no, there isn't, but I no? would love to see that happen. That should be fun. <laughs> we, we talked earlier about uh, the Dress Red for Heart and Stroke, and we had a lot of fun doing that too. But now, going, let's look provincially now for a minute. Back in December, there was the big campaign about getting the lottery calendar for Heart and Stroke. Do you share in some of that? funding that comes from that? Absolutely we do. Um, the British Columbia office does and we also share as a, it, the Heart and Stroke Foundation is nationwide so we have a great opportunity to share all of our resources um, as well as the funds. So you'll be getting some of that money. Well it, Absolutely. it just gets spread around and actually there's, there's, a, there's a campaign as well too for young students do they not to be able to go and, and learn at Heart and Stroke Foundations? Well, we have uh, Jump Rope for Heart and Hoops for Heart that take place in schools across Nanaimo. And um, they learn to be heart smart children, sip oh, smart okay. children. Yeah, it's wonderful. So there's, you've got a lot, of, a lot of other plans coming up as well. I know there's the big bike coming up in June. And yes. that's, did, how big is that bike? How uh, many well, people does it carry? It's a bike built for 30. So there's three people across and 10 people back. Wow. It's technically a parade vehicle and it's huge. And it does go around the town, doesn't it? Yes. I've, I've been on it, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, really on June is. 13th and 14th. As a matter of fact, I've got a T-shirt that says I'm a team captain oh. on a big bike. <laughs> yes, that was great. But uh, on a more serious note now, the heart, heart disease and stroke takes one Canadian every seven minutes that we are on this earth. Yes, it how does. Can we, how can we circumvent that? What do we have to do? Well, we just launched a new website called makehealthlast.ca. And it's a great opportunity to check your risk factors and see the different things you can do to help prevent heart disease and stroke. And, and that's on your website. We're going to talk about the website in just a minute. Uh, but the, I guess the important thing, too, is about exercise. Any particular kind of exercise, one better than the other, or just let's get out and walk even? Absolutely. Walking is fantastic. Uh, it's moderate to... Um, a lot of exercise. <laughs> you know, 30 minutes a day is really beneficial. Yeah, super. Sarah, thank you so much for being with us today and talking about Heart and Stroke and the campaign and your, the efforts that you're doing to raise funds here in Nanaimo uh, for the awareness. And I think your website will be up, smazy at uh, hsf.bc.ca, uh, or you can give her a call at 250-754-5274. And you're now on Facebook and Twitter. We are. So, yeah, great to have you. Now we're going to go over to the distributors again, and I'm going back. Take it away.
contributors right here. Awesome job, guys. I'm getting high fives all the way around. Done and done and done. Distributors from right here in the Nanaimo, they'll be back later on with some more music and interview as well with uh, Andrew Roberts. Great stuff. Coming up, we also have some uh, segments on Nanaimo Policing, Black History Month, a look at the Nanaimo Concert Band, as well as National Cupcake Day, and the cupcakes are over there. I'm drooling already. Sorry, I'll get you one for your birthday, Howie. Anyways, but first, before we get on to that, so I do have to explain why I have this particular toque on my head. Howie, you can look in real close at the front of it there. Beautiful. All right. What it is, it's an upcoming fundraiser that's happening across Canada that looks at homelessness. It's the coldest night of the year walk. And again, this is happening across Canada on Saturday, February the 23rd. And what it is, it's teams or individuals. They walk a route to either 2, 5, or 10 kilometers. And from that, um, participants raise money. And basically what it is, is sort of to give a little bit of a taste about what the homeless have to go through. Uh, on you know, a normal cold Canadian evening. Not easy stuff, that's for sure. So funds raised for the Nanaimo portion of this is, uh, will go to the Island Crisis Care Society. They oper operate a number of uh, shelters and recovery homes in central Vancouver Island, so really great important work that they do. And Shaw TV actually has a team participating in the event, so come on down and walk with us as well. That's the coldest night of the year, Saturday, February 23rd. Uh, registration starts for that at 4. The walk starts at 5 and the route starts and ends at St. Paul's Anglican Church. That's at 100 Chapel Street in downtown Nanaimo. For more information and register online, check out their website, coldestnightsoftheyear.org. All right, moving forward now, it's time to introduce a new host to the show, but not a new host to the media here in town. No strangers to the folks here in Nanaimo. He's a veteran journalist and a former city councillor, among other duties and accomplishments, including a place in the Slam Canada Wrestling Hall of Fame. Very, very cool stuff. But of course, now that he's retired, we can finally get him back on the show here. So I'm going to pass it over now to Mr. Merv Unger. Thank you very much. I guess I've been kicking around here for about 25 to 30 years. Usually when elections come around is when I come out of the woodwork. But I uh, thought I'd get my feet wet a little early because we've got one coming up in less than 100 days. But in the meantime, we're going to take uh, these uh, regular segments here on the show to, to look at what's happening in our community uh, and uh, what makes us tick. And with that in mind, we're going to start off the first one with policing in our community. And my guest today is Sergeant Cheryl Armstrong with the Nanaimo RCMP. She's the NCO in charge of community policing and victim services. And as we head into the new year now, we've finished a year and some of the stats must be in. What are the concerns and challenges? Are we making any headway? Um, we had a very successful year last year. We noticed that our crime stats are relatively the same, which is good. They haven't gone down too much, but they haven't increased. One of our major concerns continues to be property thefts. Right now, we're just entered into a campaign. It's the anti-theft campaign with partnership with ICBC. And we've noticed there's a huge increase in theft from motor vehicles. So we're asking people to, you know, be very careful what you leave in your vehicle. iPads, uh, phones, change. They continue to be one of the top, art, top targets of these thieves. And uh, as you said, uh, looking after what you have, not leaving it in the car is so important. Is locking it in the trunk enough? That will help. I mean, it's, if you don't need to take a valuable with you, why are you taking it? That's one of the things, messages we are giving out, but it's really important not to have anything visible. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned uh, many of the programs that have been developed uh, over the years with the RCMP and specifically the downtown safety and housing for the homeless, which is the topic that we're just talking about. Uh, are these proving successful in Nanaimo over the past few years? They're very successful. I transferred in from the Lower Mainland out of North Vancouver and also from the homicide team. And I was very impressed having been here 13 years ago and served here for seven years, the difference in the downtown core. And there's a great credit to be given towards the councillors of the day, the city manager, the uh, bylaws, as well as the RCMP, working with the homeless, getting these people connected to services. And we just had an incident where a young fellow came up and talked to Corporal LaBerge where he said, you know, at the time I really hated you. You kept pestering me, but I'm very glad that you did because I accessed the services. I'm now back with my family and I have a job. Well, a lot of those programs were uh, not just chasing people off the street, but the, uh, we had a bicycle program where they uh, regularly patrolled the areas where often the cars wouldn't be able to get to the police cars and a quick response, and that certainly helped and, and gave direct contact with some of the people. 
Yeah, and these groups also work with the homeless, the outreach teams, they work with mental health on a regular basis. And the great thing about the bicycle squad is that they don't, they don't respond to calls for service, so they are what we call project oriented. So they have the time to work with these individuals and connect them to the services, which is something that they actually have to have. Our time is escaping fast, but we're talking about uh, the various programs. There's more to policing than just driving the car and stopping speeders. We have the community policing and uh, many programs in it, Crime Stoppers, and that's now even expanding into schools. That's correct. We we're very fortunate that we got this uh, approval of the school board last year, and we have now started into Dover Bay as well as NDSS. So we are putting Crime Stoppers tips into the school, and we've had some success with that. The children or the students will report crimes, and they can actually get money for it. And, of course, we have uh, Citizens on Patrol and the Block Watch program. We have the Police Auxiliary program. The new Marine Division, which is helping uh, out with uh, some of the waterfront problems. And the school liaison. And, and we need volunteers in all of those areas. That's correct. Citizens on Patrol is one of the big programs that we have. Like they're go They will be going door to door within the next week to deliver out flyers on what you can do to help protect yeah. yourself from thieves and they're doing night patrols for us. They're another set of eyes and ears, so it's Okay, excellent. thank you very much for dropping by, Cheryl. It, it's been most helpful. And now uh, we'd like to find out a little more about uh, that music we've had here, and here's Andrew to talk about it. Well, thank you, Merv. Um, it's a special occasion here at Shaw today. We've actually got a full band in the studio. That's why I'm uh, wearing my Canadian tuxedo. So uh, yeah, I am here with Brett, Kaylee and Austin of The Distributors. Now, uh, thanks for coming, guys. No problem. Um, they are up in the running for BC's Best Teen Band Contest, put on by You Think Magazine. And uh, so how's that going? You got, what's, what are you doing right now with that? Um, well, right now we're trying to get votes. Yeah, right now we're trying to get votes. Uh, we're in fifth place. Um, we have to be in at least the top three to make it, um, to be able to play in Vancouver, yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Are you, um, you're online? Yeah, we are. Okay. Um, we have a Facebook page, we have a Twitter page, we have our own uh, website. Yeah, so you can access lots of our uh, videos and songs there. How can people vote for you? Um, they can go to bandcontest.youthink.ca and all they have to do is create an account um, and then that allows them to vote every day until the 18th of February. Perfect. Now, um, you're working on a new music video as well. How's that going? Well, we haven't started it yet. We're going to record our uh, EP first, and then once that's done, we're going to definitely make a music video. We're going to make it very creative and something original, hopefully. Yeah, very, it'll be awesome. Perfect, perfect. And uh, where can we see you play live? Um, you can see us on the 14th of February uh, at the Queen's. We're playing with a band called Ben Sinister uh, from Vancouver. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. What can people expect from your live show? Lots of energy, good music. Uh, yeah, we just like to have a good time, put on a good show. How did you guys come together? Uh, me and Brett met four years ago at the Blues Underground. Um, we met Austin seven months ago, so we've been together as the distributors for seven months. Have you played outside of Nanaimo at all? Any, any other places? Yeah, we played in Duncan, uh, Port Alberni, where else? Uh, what was that? Um, Campbell River, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's Courtney, actually. Courtney. Is it, is it mostly all ages shows, or do you, do you play bars too? Or? Uh, primarily bars. Uh, we like to get into playing some more all ages shows and festivals as well. Excellent, excellent. And uh, so your website is facebook.com slash the distributors. Mm -hmm. People can see on there. Um, yeah, and uh, thanks for coming out. It's awesome. You got a, a song coming up? Do you want to get ready for that? And uh, it's going to be called uh, Mean Woman, which is coincidentally the Jeopardy answer to the question, Matt Carter is A. Uh, so thanks, guys.
I love the distributors. I think they're great. And I think I saw Anna dancing as well. Anyway, I, uh, we're going to go to a very nice woman. Uh, this is Amy Campbell. I've got her with me. She wrote a book uh, that is not brand new, but it's called uh, Brass Roots, and it's about the Nanaimo Concert Band. And uh, so I've got her here, here to tell me a little bit about how this book came to be. Uh, as, as far as I can recall, it was somewhere around 1972 at the 100th anniversary that you got this initial idea. So tell me about that. Well, the Nanaimo Concert Band, which was formed uh, in 1872 under a different name, is the longest uh, continuously active band in Canada. And we have a letter in the book confirming this by uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, the wow. Prime Minister. The so um, that's one plus four right there. Right, and so it was at the reunion that, that you uh, got the initial idea. You saw some of the people, the descendants of some of the original band members who I understand were minors. Is that how it all came about? Yes, um, there were a lot of those people around, granddaughters and what have you of uh, Reverend Reynard. And um, it was very interesting talking to these people who were actually a part of the history because Nanaimo has always been very musical. We have spawned so many wonderful musicians mm -hmm. and it would take me hours to go through them all, but uh, music is such a part of Nanaimo that I thought that with the history of this band, it would be a wonderful thing to have to it have in it. the Library of Congress for future generations because these things tend to get lost. Right, as a legacy. And your husband is actually a musician and I understand he was in the band as, as well. From the age of 12. Right. So you've got a legacy yourself. And yes. you went, went and interviewed, you had a box full of information that you uh, accumulated or somebody accumulated well, for you? Well, after the um, um, 100th anniversary, I had done the publicity for the event. And so I had uh, accumulated a large amount of information and a lot of these people were very interesting and uh, they wrote me letters and sent me photographs and all this sort of thing mm -hmm. and I just kept it all and when no one else stood up and said hey I'm writing a book about the concert band I just went ahead and did it and said well you didn't know that you couldn't write apparently that's right yeah you, didn't, you weren't <laughs> told that you couldn't and you did the writing and you took the pictures I, and you did the interviews so I did you, everything you and you I had so much fun doing it the people were all so wonderful and supportive, and it was just fun doing everything. Mm -hmm. so, so then you actually got uh, your musical start early on because you were doing, you were from Victoria, right? That's you, right. Yeah, and so you had, now tell me about your band uh, leader at that time, uh, or the, was the schools had a band leader, and his, uh, Mr. Bigsby. Well, school's band leader was um, Mr. McFarlane. Okay. Mr. Bigsby was um, the band coordinator for all of Victoria. Right. This was way back in 1951-52, uh -huh. the last century. Right. And um, I used to write for one of the papers on the school page, and at one point I wrote an item about the band, mm -hmm. and I was really thrilled to be part of the band, and Mr. Bigsby picked it up, and he decided he should reward me. And so he got me an interview with the then um, rather famous person, Margaret Truman. So you've got lots of stories of your own. So it all ties together. Uh, if people want to find out more, then we've got the information up so that they can get in touch with you and they can yes. find out how they can get a copy of this book. So yes. I want to thank you so much for being on and telling us a little bit about the book. And now we're going to go back to Anna and uh, the Cupcake Lady. We're going to uh, talk about cupcakes now. I love that gnome, the, cup, the name. Thank you, Joan. Uh, the Cupcake Lady, I just love it. And today I'm here with Kim Duma and um, she's a registrant for BCS, BCSPCA fundraiser, and it's called National Cupcake Day. Welcome, Kim. Thank, Thank you, you for much. coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and where, where do you work? Island Veterinary Hospital. And so Island Vet Hospital is one of the participants? Yeah, as a team, we'll be selling the cupcakes for awesome. the SPCA. Wow, that's great. Now, this is the first annual here in Canada. Um, apparently, it's been very successful around the world in Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. So, I hope this year we do great, great things for animal shelters. 
So you are, you, I love these. These are fabulous cupcakes, by Thank the you. way. And we are going to, she's going to demo how we make one of these. <laughs> Isn't that great? I love it. So all of our cupcakes have an animal theme. This is our I little chick. Um, the decorations the are in fondant, which you make and you color whatever color you want. And then you can mold it into pretty much anything you want. It does melt quickly. I noticed that um, it's kind of, yeah. it's the hot in here, mind warm. you. Right, yeah. So I've pre-done them. Look at how cute that is. So do you roll it out? Do you have like a little... Yeah, you can roll it out or just press rolling it and pin? cut it out. Okay. They um, look so nice. I love them. Now, what's that that you have in there? Use a little bit there? of glue. It's just icing, it's sugar, and water. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, no, we don't want to eat glue. No way. Icing, sugar, and water. Yep. And is it a thick consistency or not too bad? Oh, it is kind of thick, isn't it? Yeah. And then you just put it on there. Oh, look at, I love these little eyes. Now, these little eyes are made how? I thought that was great. Just too. with some white fondant and a little uh, chocolate chip. Little upside down chocolate, chocolate chip? chip? Yep. That's awesome. I love them. Now, I take it you guys made these cupcakes from scratch? Of course. Scratch and the fondant and everything? Yes, the fondant and is made from scratch. And is, is this something that you guys normally do? No, obviously nope. not. Just but a hobby. Now, um, for, it is a fundraiser for the SPCA, so you will be having, you will be selling these cupcakes, and you'll be selling them at Island Vet Hospital? Yep, we'll be selling them at the clinic from and the 12th to the 25th. Excellent, okay. Um, Pre-sales are welcome. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> We've started taking orders already. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kim. You're um, we're going to take a little break uh, right now. We will be coming back to the cupcakes, and um, thank you for coming. Thank and we are going to our main set with Bob. Take it away, Bob. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to come back and I'm going to have some yummy yummies. I know coming up really soon. But you know what? We've got uh, today we have Shalima Gant, who's the president of the Nanaimo African Heritage Society. And Devlin Wyatt is joining us today. Welcome, Shalima and Devlin. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, uh, your society has been around for a long, long time, Shalima. 13 years. 13, when 13. did it get started? Way back in? We started in 1999 when it was Malaspina University at that time, and now it's now Vancouver it's Island University, yes. That's <laughs> where it got its start, yeah. Yes. So February is really a celebration month for you, and it started off on the first of the month uh, at the museum. And I understand you had a fabulous attendance turnout there. Yeah, we had a wonderful incredible. attendance. It was but our opening ceremony. Yes. More importantly, we want to talk about what have you got planned for the rest of the month? I know there's a gospel concert coming up. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that, Shalima. Where is it being held? And That's exciting. It's going to be at the Brecon United Church, and it's on Sunday, February the 10th. Uh, the doors are opening at 3 o'clock, and the concert starts at 3.30. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, array of guests that are joining us. Um, um, we have um, Candace Churchill, Candace Churchill, Tom Pickett. Tom Pickett sorry. <laughs> um, uh, she was going to try and read it. Now you don't. Have to read. Yeah, she knows it by heart. She knows yes, it by heart. Chance Lovett in the quartet, yes. and uh, so. And Devlin, Devlin, I understand. I, I don't know how your French is, but I'm, mine's not very good at all. Yeah, okay, okay, <laughs> fine. But on the 17th of the month is the Maple Sugar Festival, and you've got something going on there as well, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, on the 17th at uh, the Bevan Park Auditorium, we're having Jean Pierre Macoso uh, come in to celebrate the uh, Maple Sugar Festival with us. Um, now, we met Jean Pierre Macoso a couple years back at uh, the Unitarian Fellowship here in Anamo during a storytellers uh, event, Anamo Storytellers. And uh, oh, he was, he was really good. He was really immersive with his storytelling. And uh, at one point he got really like underneath what he was doing. It was really powerful. And I thought for sure he, this man was gonna get crushed by the awesome power oh, oh. of his own imagination. Wow. And I got to the point where I stood, I stood up because I thought I had to save this man. And, and Shalima <laughs> had to grab me and, and convince me that everything was gonna be all right. Oh, wonderful. That, okay. that sounds really, really good. And he's yeah. gonna be there at the Maple Sugar. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Good for you. He's now, really and awesome. Shalima, to wind up the month, you've got a huge, big celebration going on on Sunday the 24th. That's the grand finale. Don't miss it. It's at Bevan Park. Again, we try to keep our hours uh, early for people to get out, those who travel and get back on the ferry. But we have um, 
um, lots of <laughs> we have lots of a variety of foods and entertainment. It's a variety show. There's Ez Ezra Cazero, who's been here many times performing for us. Uh, he always brings the house down. Um, we have um, we know Cha um, sorry. Angie, Angie Riley, uh, that's uh, Andrea Riley, who's a storyteller and writer, and she'll be uh, introducing um, Sophia, Sophia Firecracker. Firecracker. So check that out. We're going to have a little promo yeah. about that in our program Sounds booklet that comes fabulous. out every year. So well. that's going to be happening. Uh, lots of ethnic food, um, great ambiance. That's at the Bowen Park. Uh, auditorium on, the, on, on uh, the 24th. The yeah, Sounds the 24th. great. 24th. So Shalim and Devon, thank you so much for coming and, and spending some time with our, our time is really up. We've got to run. Uh, I know you're going to have a great time this the rest of the month. You're looking for volunteers. I know. Give Shalima a call at 250-729-9332. She's looking for your help. So give her, give her a call and volunteer to help. Does the, that mean the, we can expect you to be there, Bob? I'll be, I'm coming, yes. And don't and, forget our website. <laughs> and the website, too. And don't yeah. forget, we're going to now get some more cupcakes, I think. Mm -hmm. Some icing is going on. Yes. Where you go, Anna. There is icing going on. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate it. And we are back with Terry Alfred. And um, he's going to, he's part of the, he's a participant as well in this cupcake challenge. And it is a challenge. I was told that it is a competition, is this correct? Yes, there's Between uh, the contestants? There or not is, contestants, but um, participants. Teams, yeah. There's three different contests going on nationwide. Yeah. Um, one of the contests is for best decorated cupcake. Ah, which you guys are going to eat. That's aren't what you? we're hoping for, yeah. <laughs> there is also a contest for individual who raises the most money for the SPCA and oh, yeah. also oh, okay. the team that raises the most money for the SPCA. And you and Kim are a team, yes. which is awesome. We're part of the Island and Bet team. And so um, you are going to show us one of your cupcakes yes. as well. You're uh, going to be decorating a cupcake. And, th and this one I'm really looking forward to. <laughs> what do you think this could be? <laughs> You're going to show us yes. what it's going to end up being. Yeah, so, so we start off with piping the cupcakes, which we have an empty one right here. So with the piping bag, you always want to make sure you twist the top. And then it's just a gentle squeeze and you release the pressure and you get like a little oh, rosette. Right. The little, um, little rosettes, of yeah. course, like this. So it'll end up like that eventually. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And, and I kind of so like the, the chocolate too. Yeah, the chocolate, chocolate um, we actually, before we decorate our cupcakes, we also brush it with simple syrup. Right. Just to add a bit more moisture mm -hmm. and a bit more sugar. Can't go, wrong, can't go wrong with more sugar. <laughs> Love it. So once we pipe all of the cupcakes, then we'll grab a fondant sheep head, <laughs> which... This is all made out of fondant? Yes, fondant. all fondant. fondant. Okay. And so wow. The icing, and you can eat all of that, yes. can't you? It's Yum. Uh, made out of just marshmallows and icing sugar, actually. Wow. And so with the sheep head, once the head's in place, you just <laughs> place the marshmallows kind of all over and the icing oh, sugar beautiful. will just hold it into place. Oh, it's or a work of art. Who wants to eat that? <laughs> the poor little sheep. Here, let me turn that around for you. Okay, thank you. How's that? Isn't he great? And the eyes are done again with the little chocolate chips. What a great yeah. idea. I love that idea. Awesome. Look at, oh, he's, uh, he does look like a little get sheep one more looking at there. me. Look at that. Isn't that great? I just love that. That is, <laughs> now what, el what else do you have here on your beautiful um, tiered plate? We tried making a couple cats, <laughs> which oh. we did now, those with the fondant as well. Now, one thing you mentioned to me that you're making the cupcakes for humans, us, yeah. of course, but you're also making, are they cupcakes as well for dogs? Yes, is we've that got. Right? Two different recipes that we're doing <laughs> for dogs. We have a pumpkin spice cupcake, or cupcake, mm. sorry, and also a peanut butter cupcake. A peanut, you know, my dog loves peanut butter, so I can see it being a big hit having yeah. the peanut butter cupcakes. And yeah. so the dogs can, it's all edible, obviously. Yeah, it's all edible, it's all natural <laughs> ingredients that we're using. 
And uh, with all the ingredients, Island Vet is actually donating all of our ingredients. So 100% oh. of proceeds will go to the SPCA. I see. Oh, that's awesome. What a great cause, isn't it? Yes, really, it, is. it is. I love it. Oh, I know. <laughs> look, at, look at the little sheep head. Oh. <laughs> isn't he cute? See the little sheep head? Exactly. <laughs> Nicely done. This love is it. Obviously, some, some crazy stuff. Isn't I must it great? Be, Terry, which one do I get to eat? Uh, you can pick whatever you want. Nice. <laughs> Better. Nice. I hope I do too. Wonderful. Okay, well, first things first, things first, Anna. Thank you very much for thank hooking you. us up. And, and thank you so much you. for exactly. and joining us. Absolutely, yeah. Thanks, Terry. And, and thank Kim as well, us. over, over yeah. getting your, your best thanks, side with some photos over there. <laughs> also, and uh, yeah, if you could actually talk to the people in charge and make this National Cupcake Month. I would appreciate it, and I would appreciate I it. I would appreciate, I appreciate it, it since I've been called the cupcake lady now. I love it. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so very much. And again, I'm really glad this actually was the last segment as well on the show because it's kind of like this right here. It's the <laughs> icing on the cake. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh. All right, and I must admit, it's also not very, you know, or sorry, it is actually quite a bit different from the other segments we had on the show. So you can say it's not very cookie cutter either. Uh, also on that, you know, I must admit, I do get really stoked on these dessert segments because back when I was a kid and I was going to school, my parents would put all these like healthy things into my lunch bag instead of these decadent treats. So quite often I could say um, on Eclair Day, I could see fruit leather. All right, one pity laugh. <laughs> I got a boo out of that. Okay, I got one more for you. All right, you know about iPads and iPods and that sort of stuff? Well, what do you call a guy that fixes the eye shoe? An apple cobbler. I was, was swinging for the fences, home run there, but I just got a bunt, bunt cake. Donut, try this at home. Okay, uh, right now the producer is giving me some sort of finger scene, so I better stop these jokes here real quick. I should say a big thanks to all of our guests, of course, uh, all of our staff and volunteers in front of the cameras and behind the scenes. I also want to send a big shout out, of course, to Dodd's Furniture for their support and Thrifty Foods for bulking up after the cupcakes with some sandwiches here to feed our ravenous staff. You can find Shaw TV on Facebook and Twitter. You can check out previous episodes, uh, hopefully with some sugar involved, of this show on YouTube. And we're going to have one more song from the Rock and Roll Power Trio behind us, the distributors. The song is called You're at Fault, and that song is dedicated to Andrew Roberts for making me into a mean woman. My name is Matt Carter. Thank you so much for watching the show right here on Shaw TV. <laughs>
Dodds Furniture's The Show is brought to you by Dodds Furniture and Mattress.